creating a glossy black wall tile in the materials browser. This is what I'm trying to create. In Revit, I'm going to the Manage tab and I'm going straight into Materials. If I pop down here to this little grey symbol here with a plus, I'm going to create a brand new material rather than using any of the template files that are close. And I either rename or I come up here, so that was a right click, sorry, and I come up to Identity and I'll call it Black Brick Tile Glossy. And if I want to be specific, it's 200 by 100 high. I might change this information if I wanted. I'll go back in later and change my graphics so that I've got a hatch pattern that represents exactly what's happening for my hidden line views in the elevation and plan. However, it's under appearance that I want to work with today. I'm dragging this image down so I can see it as well as possible while I'm creating it, making sure everything's <coughs> heading in the right direction. I click on this here and change the scene. I want to change it to sphere. And another one that I like to work in is the walls because it gives me a better sense of proportion with that chair there. I can see whether it's actually working, but I don't need that today because I'm being very specific about the sizes. So rather than muck around with this colour, I'm going straight into image and I'm clicking on this little drop down box here and I'm choosing the tile option. I'll make this a little bit bigger. I'm starting with the colours. So as for the tile appearance, I'm just choosing pure black. And as for the grout appearance, I'm choosing pure white. I'm setting them those up first, so it's really quite obvious that with my images I change objects and uh, proportions. Now, stacked bond isn't what we're after. We're after a brick look. So if you can see here that with the pattern type, I'm coming up to this drop-down menu and I'm choosing running bond. Now, notice we've got a tile count. For what we're doing today, this doesn't matter very much, but later on that tile count gives you a better proportion of tiles per scale, and that in turn allows us to do things like muck around with the colour variance and the fade variance, something very useful if you're trying to make your tiles look imperfect. So down here under scale, I know that I've, if I've got four tiles that we're referring to, then four tiles by 200 is 800 wide. And if they're 100 high, that makes my height 400. And oh, sorry, forgot to unlock. Unlock. All right, looking good. So coming down to here, uh, sorry, back up to my grout. I can see that that's looking a little bit thicker and chunkier than the image that I want to create. The gap width roughly relates to the millimetres in the gap, so 0.5 equates to about 0.5, sorry, about 5 millimetres. It's not perfect, but it's fairly close. So 0.3 and 0.3, and let's go and inspect what we've got here. Okay, not bad but I still want to muck around with the gloss and the reflection and the bump, which we're not seeing particularly well here. Let's start with the bump. And it's important to remember that I've written down this information, the 200 by 100 with the three millimetre grout. That's easy enough for this one. In other times you might have more specific information. So if I come to here, I'm going to choose tiles again for the bump. So the way the bump works is everything that is black is deep or a hole and everything that is white is high and everything in between is a shade between the two. So if I want my grout to re appear re recessed, I'm going to click on the grout and I'm going to make it black. I'm going to click on the tile and I'm going to make it white. So it doesn't relate to the way it looks as far as colour is concerned. This this bump map is literally relating to the, the grey and white saturation here and turning that into levels of bumpiness. I'll need to make the proportions exactly the same or it will look ridiculous. <coughs> Unlock. It's 
So the width 800 and the height 400. All right, and that was because we've kept this here. We'll change that to running bond. Let's make our grout the same. 0.3 and 0.3. Okay, so what we've got here is whatever we see that's white is going to be higher and whatever is black is going to be deeper and look like it's got a recess. And that's all I need to do for this level of bumpiness. Now if we zoom in a little bigger, we should be able to see not very well by well, the looks of it, but that is exactly what's happening. I can control the amount of bump. Let's see if I bump this right up, how intense that looks. Okay, so I can adjust its level of bumpiness from here. Now, I'm coming back to reflection and turning it on. And again, when it comes to this glossiness, I'm going to choose one of these drop down and I'm going to plug in all of that information. So just give me a minute. So because the way the reflection works is actually the bump is going to be identical to the bump map, what that means is when it comes to glossiness, whatever is black is not shiny and whatever is white is. So as we know, that's exactly what we want to have happen for this one, which was the exact same proportions for the bump map. So rather than plug all of those in, which I just did, can you see here I've got a link texture transforms? What that means is that whatever I created for the bump map, I could then use the same transforms for the reflection map or the glossy map. Done. All right. Way too glossy. I need to start to pull that. So I've just continued to keep playing with the direct and the oblique and pull them back until it looks about right, because if it looks right, it is right. And hopefully you can see now that it's exaggerated, having this gloss on it has exaggerated the fact that there is actually some bump in there as well. Whether it's too much, I'm going to have to render it to see whether that works out. But on the whole, that's our black glossy material.